Hi guys, I'm April. Disclaimer lang, I'm not a chemistry major, but as a registered medical technologist, I do believe we also have good background in chemistry. And yung goal ko lang sa video na to is to share a brief and simplified explanation ng basic concepts of chemistry na sana makatulong sa inyo. What I love about chemistry is that pag inaaral mo siya, madali siyang appreciate because it's very tangible. Madali mo siyang ma-observe kasi everywhere you look, may chemical reaction ang nangyayari. It's present in the air we breathe, from the water that we drink, it's literally everywhere. And our journey to learning chemistry is a learning sequence. So magsistart tayo from the basic concepts. We'll make sure na strong yung foundation nyo, you'll understand everything, and we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. So for today's episode, magsistart tayo with definitions and terminologies. I know, medyo boring yung part na to, pero this is very important because we have to know what we are talking about. Maybe ngayon may idea kayo what is an atom, molecule, but we really have to define it to make sure that we are on the same page. So first and foremost, what is chemistry? There are a lot of definitions for chemistry and this one is from Britannica. Science that deals with the properties. When we say properties, there's physical and chemical. So for the physical property, it's more the identity of the material. Its appearance, color, texture, odor, boiling point, melting point, etc. And then when we say chemical property, it's more of how the material behaves during and after the reaction. So it often involves reactivity, stability, oxidation states, and the like. So when we say composition, relative amount of element that constitute a substance. So kung anong mga element yung present sa substance na yun, and gano karami yung present. So for example, we have water or H2O. So, dito pa lang, makikita nyo na in a molecule of water, there is two hydrogen atoms and isang oxygen atom. So, another example is carbon dioxide. So, in a molecule of carbon dioxide, we have one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. For the structure, it's how the atoms are arranged in a molecule. It gives us a 3D representation on how the atoms are arranged in a molecule. So I have here a structure of water and carbon dioxide. I try to represent each element with a different color and according to its relative size. And kung mapapansin nyo, bakit si water angle and si carbon dioxide linear? So sa paggawa kasi guys ng structure, maraming factors na dapat i-consider. And iisa-isahin natin siya sa mga susunod na episode. So the transformations they undergo. Ito na yung sinasabi natin guys na chemical reaction. Where in one or more substances, we call them reactants, react or combine together chemically to form another substance which we call the product. For example guys, retain natin si water. Where in molecules of hydrogen combine with molecules of oxygen to form molecules of water. So I'll just go ahead and balance this formula. Another example is carbon dioxide where carbon atom reacts with oxygen molecules to form carbon dioxide. Kung mapapansin nyo, balance na to. Baka magtanong kayo guys, bakit si carbon walang subscript and si hydrogen and oxygen meron? Dito papasok yung monoatomic, diatomic molecules natin. Wherein yung diatomic molecules, they are present naturally na magkasama. Don't worry, dadaan na natin siya sa mga susunod na episode. So for these chemical reactions to happen, nagkakaroon tayo ng energy changes. Wherein bonds break sa reactant side and new bonds form sa product side. Itodorin ko siya para mas madali nyo siyang ma-imagine. In making water, meron tayong dalawang molecules of hydrogen and isang molecule of Oxygen. After the chemical reaction, oxygen now will share its electrons with hydrogen. So, kung mapapansin nyo, balance pa rin. At the start of the reaction, we have 4 hydrogen atoms and 2 oxygen atoms. And at the end of the reaction, meron pa rin tayong apan hydrogen and dalawang oxygen. That's why, kaya natin siya sinasabing balance. As the bonds break on the reactant side, energy is absorbed 
and as new bonds form on the product side, energy is released. The energy that is needed for the reaction to happen is called the bond energy or bond dissociation energy. Next, we have is atoms. Atoms, the smallest elemental unit in a sample of matter. So, smallest. Ibig sabihin ba nun, wala nang mas maliit sa atoms? So, if you can remember, guys, we still have subatomic particles, which is the electrons, protons, etc. Pero, what we mean by this is smallest in a way that it still retains its identity. Meaning, for example, when I break down water down to its building block, may matitira pa rin akong hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms na kaya kong i-differentiate from each other. Paano? Una-una by its properties and second, sa composition ng atom niya. Kita niyo guys sa periodic table for hydrogen, we have one proton and an electron and for oxygen, we have eight. Unlike electrons na magkakamuka silang lahat and protons na magkakamuka silang lahat. When we say molecule, it is two or more atoms combined together via chemical bond. Examples are hydrogen molecules, oxygen molecules, and of course, water. Then next, we have pure substance and a mixture. Pure substances are those that cannot be purified further. So we have elements and compounds. Elements are those that are composed of identical atoms which cannot be subdivided by physical or chemical means. Ito na yung makikita natin guys sa periodic table of elements. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and the likes. When we combine these elements chemically, we form a compound. So compounds are made up of two or more different elements in fixed ratios. Highlight to guys yung fixed ratios. Bakit to importante? So when we're making a molecule of water, laging dalawang hydrogen lang at isang oxygen. Ano mangyayari pag hindi ko yan sinunod? Kunwari, sobrahan ko yung oxygen. Water pa rin ba to guys? Pag hindi natin sinunod yung ratio, we're making another compound, which is actually a hydrogen peroxide. So next is, baka magtanong kayo, anong difference ng compound sa molecule? Molecule is a general term when two or more atoms combine. Ibig sabihin, hindi importante magkaiba ba yung atoms sa pinagkocombine mo or parehas lang. On the other hand, kay compound, it is crucial na dapat ang pinagkocombine mong atoms is magkaiba. So, makikitake note na lang ako nito guys. All compounds are molecule but not all molecules are compound. For practice, identify natin itong mga to if it's molecule and a compound. So, for carbon dioxide, molecule ba siya? Check natin yung criteria. Dapat meron tayong two or more atoms. We have one carbon atoms and two oxygen atoms. So, nasatisfy yung criteria. So, yes, it is a molecule. Next, compound ba siya? So, again, okay na tayo sa two or more atoms. Ang criteria for compound, dapat magkaibang atom siya. Since it's a carbon and oxygen atom, yes, it's also a compound. What about nitrogen? So again, for a molecule, dapat meron tayong two or more atoms. Here we have two atoms of nitrogen. So yes, it is a molecule. Compound ba siya? So we only have two nitrogen atoms. Wala nang iba. So, no, it's not a compound. So, when we combine pure substances without any chemical reaction happening, we call it a mixture. Meaning, magkasama lang sila sa isang space, walang chemical process nangyayari, walang rearrangement of atoms, walang sharing of electrons, and meron tayong dalawang types of mixtures. Homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture. So for homogeneous, it is a mixture wherein uniform siya all throughout. For example, when I mix salt with water, walang chemical reaction ang nangyayari. Pero, kung mapapansin nyo, hindi nyo na makita yung salt sa water. For heterogeneous mixture, it's non-uniform. Meaning, pag pinagsama natin yung dalawang bagay, madi-differentiate pa rin natin yung isa't isa. So, for example, when I mix dirt with water, so kahit i-mix ko siya ng matagal, hindi siya completely madidissolve, eventually, magsisettle pa rin yung dirt sa ilalim. So, again, homogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture. Um, may ilang ko isa pa example. Um, Nag-mix ako ng milk to water. 
Okay, minix natin. Question, is it a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture? I will answer it at the end of the video. So let's have a quick recap before I end this video. Now again, atoms of the smallest elemental unit is a sample of matter in a way that it still retains its identity. So basically, when you break up something, yun na lang matitirang building block. Molecule is when you combine two or more atoms together, magkapares man silang atom or magkaiba. So we have pure substances and mixture. Pure substances are those that we cannot further purify. Examples are elements and compounds. Elements are composed of identical atoms. Ito yung nakikita natin sa periodic table. And when we combine different elements together chemically, we form compounds. Compounds should be combined together in fixed ratios. When we combine pure substances together without any chemical reactions happening, we form a mixture. There are two types of mixture, the homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous if it's uniform and heterogeneous if it's non-uniform. So to answer the question, heterogeneous ba or homogeneous? The answer is, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Although, mukha siyang uniform guys, walang layers na napuform. Milk guys contains fat. And fat is invisible in water, kaya hindi siya napuform ng solution. So I hope tama yung sagot nyo. We'll have more of this on the next episode. So that's for today's episode. Sana may natutunan kayo or may na-clarify ako sa inyong mga bagay-bagay. Please subscribe for more videos. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Bye!